Ooh, it's a chilly morning here in Key West, Florida. Might be another 60 degrees. Well, it's cold at 70 for us down here. But anyways, guys, as we're doing some uh, bashing of these religion people, these religious people, it's really not bashing. It's really just showing how they're on the wrong side of things. I want to give some examples of stuff like that, which would be like, you know, the Kundalini being represented on the outside and how it works. Uh, you know, because we know that our Kundalini and this, uh, this chakra system is the seven churches, the seven anything inside of us. It's called that. And um, it's in the works. The works are, you know, everything up into the sixth chakra when people are being gathered together. And then there is the uh, the miracle that happens, and then everyone gets fed, you know, in fellowship and stuff like that. So you'll find that where people, you know, when it comes down to um, this little box that we come to in the middle of the wilderness, this little place that we find while we're in the middle of the wilderness, this is we'll look at the Jewish people where we have this situation where they have a little box stuck to their forehead, a, a actual box stuck to their forehead that's supposed to contain the information that they forget or that they won't forget it, that this reminds them. And so they also wear uh, a jacket of some kind, you know, or a shirt that has little stems coming down so it can remind them that little knots on the end of it to tell them how they can remind them of this particular situation and, and of course to maintain the feast you know because when they all the congregation gets together and everybody gets the firstborn and a, ca a calf and throw it in there you know kill it butcher it fire it, burn it eat it consume it you know the Passover you know and they only see that once a year you know you can do this anytime you know, and this idea of passing over is that, uh, is that you, you know, you actually live through this. It's the firstborn that they take, and this idea of the firstborn is when you go under meditation, that little birth that you have that goes up that, you know, that just makes it by, you know, uh, the devil, you know, it slips right past him and gets into heaven instead, you know, and the woman runs off with her wings, she gets wings. You know, so symbolic. But you'll see that in their world, you know, they just aren't doing it. And so, you know, God leaves the building. You see him taking off the little four of the worlds. You know, he's got the, the four different beasts. He's got his, uh, uh, his throne in the middle of this, these wheels within wheels, you know, with Ezekiel's. And God has left the building, you know. That's because nobody's getting it. Nobody's doing it. And of course, the power came from your hand. And your, uh, you know, it was talking about, you know, the, uh, the, the, something of the temple, the treasures of the temple, <clears throat> which is the candlestick, you know, with the lamps on it, the seven lamps. Uh, we also, uh, have, uh, the mercy seat and all these things that go with it in the cups and stuff like that of course this is the outside world and of course they think of this temple being a place where they would go to and this in the synagogue is a place where they would gather so this idea in, in in most of these stories is that they would all gather by the water still gathering by water and then to cut through the water and then to go around something seven times until this wall, this this, mir this middle line breaks and allows you over into the promised land. And what do they do when they get to the promised land after seven, after spinning, after going around and blowing the horn seven times with uh, Jericho? They sack it. This is what they get whenever they get to go into the promised land. They get to sack it. All right. Sounds real beautiful, doesn't it? All right, so in uh, Christianity, what did they do? You know, aside from the fact that they're, you know, eating the Lord all the time, what we get is uh, we get the congregation being on this side. They're all gathering on this side. And they're coming in to get the word of God. All right, 
you have two pulpits on the right and the left hand side of course he gets the higher side the preacher and all of us get over on the other side reading the lessons okay so here's your two sides of the brain the building itself is set up like the, the human body so the sacristy is this part here with the main altar in the back that's where you keep the extra food from but you're all coming in here to get this word the same thing you're all gathering in front of this business you know the baptismal fount is a situation where you know um, you're being ab the absolution is when you're getting sprinkled with water stuff like that you know and then you go and you're actually breaking bread which is to separate and that's what you're doing you're separating and 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 you you you're taking the bread you're the bread of life and he's separating it he's holding it up to God to bless it that and the wine so here we are we separate to get the wine in 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 our world on the inside world we have separated our body and the mind the spirit that's what we have done to let it go to let ourselves free to go up and meet this place and of course when it comes down to Islam the other brother of uh, of uh, another offshoot for this Abrahamic death cult we have them going <clears throat> round and around a big black obelisk just going around and around the square pretending to be this feminine energy of the Kundalini as it tries to go from mountain to mountain or hill to hill looking searching for water you know and of course they're following a, a particular path that Abraham took but this is the idea that you know Abraham actually went inside himself and did this and they're doing it on the outside even as part of stoning the devil three times you know where they take a real pebble and throw it at a pillar in symbolic reference to this situation then they all get naked or get cleaned you know they actually you know the faith is actually burning killing and still you know this is what they say you're, you're not doing any more of these burning sac sacrifices God does not care for any of those things he said who told you I like that stuff who told you that I enjoy you know I'm tired of all this blood and, and flesh I don't accept this you know but that's what they want but you have to understand that all of those guys all of us that that run the religious track or doing their works fundamentally which means on the outside not one of it's coming in on the inside this you know hitting you with the water on the outside dunking you with this you know this is all you know it's it's lip service is what it's called it's just plain lip lip services come through you because of all of these fates all they're asking for is nothing from you they're not looking for you to say anything or be anything other than quiet still so that you can meet this God and all they do you know uh, Catholics they have this they're moving their fingers they're doing all these things and who do they confess to this confession to a preacher what is this guy going to do just because you got it out in the open this is going to I forgive you of all your sins they have no power absolutely zero power but you know it might have a placebo effect on you but it's not cleaning you out not at all even that placebo it's just uh, this idea that your outsides are going to fool you you're still in slumber and you'll always be in slumber as long and, and you can tell this by being a part of religion and if you that part of slumber means that your eyes are asleep your ears don't hear you know and that your entire body is going to deceive you so you're always going to be thinking feeling hearing <coughs> the Lord in all these mysterious ways and blaming it all on the Lord and everything when it comes down to finally making this this way over to the other side you're gonna be thinking the whole time that God is a killer he's a murderer he's your guy that's gonna take out your enemies he does it says that in there it says that he, anything that comes against you I will take care of you but it's really you know like religion if religion is in your mind you're rotting on the inside so he's going to take that away from you and this will give you a better life it'll take you from being dead into being alive and uh, you know so just reading the Bible at face value gives 
gives God one of the worst, you know, uh, uh, you know, personalities that you could possibly have. And that's how come they get mixed up with all of this one eye business because, you know, they say that the single eye is is evil. It's actually your two eyes that are evil. The single eye isn't. So you know, but, but let's let's just make it illegal to go there. Let's make it like that. So you'll see where the outside world makes all of these particular uh, the kingdom changes, and that's where you get kings, and this is where people toss their their silver into the streets whenever they're serving this whore, this whore Babylon. And I say, if the horns fit, wear them, you know. But in reality, it's just this idea of there's the Bible only speaks of inside and outside. And if you read the Bible correctly, it's only about how we communicate and serve the Lord. The way that we do it. And the outside is not the cool way. That's standing without wanting to desire to speak with the Lord. Whereas if you were standing within, and that means within yourself, which also means to repent. All these years means to turn around. It means not look outside, look inside for yourself. And you'll find this God. Those that knock on that door will find him. But if you're always knocking on someone else's door, a physical door of some kind outside, then you know you will never find him. And when you think you do, it'll just be a lie because it's a deception. And you're not, you're not. God just does not come. He doesn't come to you so much, but he'll choose when you finally come to him. That's how it works. So see, everything's backwards. Tells us about the two double-headed or the double-minded man. The double-minded man is something that you want to look out for. You want to be one. You know, if you're looking to be this one God, you want to worship one God. You know, you can't worship two. And that fountain inside of you can't put out both salt water and fresh water at the same time. So you have to choose which one of these wells you wish to choose from. And if you drink from Jacob's well, which is an outside situation, you will always be thirsty. But if you drink from the well that Jesus tells you that is inside of you, then you will never go to thirst. And of course, everyone is sitting by a well, everyone sits by water, and even these beasts have one foot on land and one foot in the sea. And so we have to figure out some way to get them together as one. All right? And that means doing the law, observing the law of Moses, and it also means to follow the way. And both of these guys are messengers. Both of these people, these, these entities, are messengers to another, the, 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 the side when they split. So Aaron is the life, and his messenger, his first, his first, would be Moses. Whereas, like for you and I, you know, the Jesus that's inside of us, he's what we are setting free. So we say that he is that little child that we set free. It's really just this, the shade side of us, the, side, the messenger in us that we send up to do our job for us. And, of course, we hear from Jesus says, from he who sent me, I've got to come and finish. And we think that's God. No. Well, we sent him up there to do that. So it tells you who God just might be, you know. You know, if the halo fits, wear it. All right, so I'm working on numbers. Numbers is a really long, long, long chapter, so I'll be in here talking to you soon about that. Plus, there's some dirty stuff in, in uh, that I heard about in um, doing with sex and, and Solomon in uh, uh, Genesis. I want to get into that and see what's going on. We'll do some X-rated stuff here before Christmas see just what they're talking about but I believe it's whenever it's actually like the fall of Solomon or maybe all about him but you know he finds the God he's talking about our, our right side but in the end he's been run off into the wilderness he's there's another reference there of 666 so it's showing that he was given something and I haven't read it yet, but my consciousness is the idea is that he was turned on by this lower side and he lost God. Alright? Remember remember that faith is lost 
geez, uh, lost the uh, the connection. And so that's how you have to read that. And it's so nice to be able to tell you the truth about these Bibles and let things free. You know, that, that monster, the idea that that guy saw the vision of the gold head and the silver torso, right? And the brass waists and the uh, steel in the legs and then the clay and the mixed together and the feet. So you see that the feet is representing the two sides of us, the two sides of your mind when there's, when the steel is mixed with clay, they don't mix. So this is that same idea that two things can't hold together, which makes it very fragile. So the idea is to try to make those, so you're standing on weak feet when you're in that situation and he's told that he's being led by his waist, which is the brass part. So God, the gold is where, the, is where God is. This is our Father that art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. All of this breastplate in here and your arm is silver. This is where you toss your silver over to, to catch the gold. But if you are looking for the lower end of us, then the belt, all of this area down here, which right now I've got a golden girdle on, if you can understand what I'm saying. That's a golden girdle. I have cinched my, gir I've girded my waist in such a way that I've got plenty of go juice in me. Anytime I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go. All right? Plenty, plenty times. But if you don't have a golden girdle, it's brass. And so, you know, this is that idea, you know, in this, when you try to turn brass, something like that, or into gold. Our legs are what hold us up. This is also the brethren. One, two, three, four, and the feet of five. So this is your brethren, it's your body. And you want to, you know, this is the guys that all gather together at the altar, you know, to go and get fixed, right? So that's how it all works. So, you know, it's just really nice to know what all these things mean and there's no more question of stuff you know and you can see very well that it's symbolic and it's really talking about you all right so i just got off one of these guys saying you know so and so's you know historians find proof that jesus really exists you know really you know i, I exist you know there's there's our proof i said i don't need to go and listen to some story about them finding this no not one bit you know, not at all. Unless he looks like Buddha and Krishna and all these guys all rolled into one. It's just garbage. Just absolute garbage. Alright? Anyways, good morning, y'all. I love you.